Hi everyone, welcome to the Triessence Martial Art Channel. It's been a while since I've uploaded a new video. Quite busy lately with personal life, family, and stuff. And I'm still on the process of making the next installment on the Patreon only video regarding the four core forces of internal style. The next one will be on the opening and closing of the hips. The reason it's taking very long is because I kind of need my student and friend to help me with the video. Now I don't have a lot of students to begin with, and out of those ones that I have, some of them are simply too busy, some don't want to be in front of camera, and some of them the schedule kind of just doesn't work with mine. So I kind of need to wait for one or two of them who actually, you know, can align their schedule with mine and then we can make the video. And the person that you know that you see the most often on my video, he's kind of busy with work, you know, Black Friday all of that, you know, he manages this uh, petrol station, so the work gets kind of hectic around this time of year. Anyway, so we were going to make a plan and then the video will come as soon as possible. In the meantime, this will be another free video for everyone because I, I believe this content is going to be interesting and should be out there for more people to see. The topic of discussion today will be on the definition of internal Chinese martial arts versus external Chinese martial arts. Now this is quite a popular topic and a quite a controversial one at that. Now in the past, I've actually met people who are very touchy on the topic. I mean I remember in some forums or you know social media I mentioned about you know internal style, internal power, etc etc and have you know frankly offended some of the people out there who you know felt that the fact that I am mentioning internal style and the fact that I do internal style is like looking down upon people who does external style, right? They got some kind of weird, you know, feeling that internal people feel entitled or elitist, and that you know we look down on them when, when we are merely just talking about us doing internal style. Now, those people are simply too sensitive and touchy, and that's simply not the case. If I were to look down to anyone as a martial art practitioner or or anything else in that regard. I'll look down upon them based on what they are capable or the lack thereof. Okay? I only judge a person by what he can do, not by what style he represents. So if I look down on someone, it's not because he does external, I do internal, internal is so much better. It's because he sucks at whatever he does, okay? You know, obviously if you've been watching my videos, you know, in the past, you know that I do have a low opinion on Chinese inter external martial arts in general, right? I do believe that as far as Chinese martial art goes, internal style are superior. Of course, you have to train correctly and you know train properly and put in the time and effort. But hypothetically speaking, if you put in the design amount of training in the correct way, the internal style does produce better results to the external styles among Chinese martial arts, okay? Um, I have very high opinion for Western external martial art, in which case it will be things like you know MMA, Muay Thai, kickboxing, you know all of those modern combat sport I have very high opinion of. Okay, I think they're all very good. Chinese external style, however, not that great. They're pretty outdated. I've talked about this in my previous video regarding the, com the incorrect, uh, incorrect method of combat. So you can check that out if you haven't. So my point is. But you know, once in a while there will be one really good external practitioner from Chinese martial art, and I'll respect that, okay? I'm not like bashing the entire system as a whole. So for, for, for whoever you know, out there that you're doing external style and you feel touched about a subject, I would say, you know, get your balls up, you know, grow some balls and, you know, stand for your style. If you choose to do external style, then do it to the best you can and don't feel threatened or belittled by other people mentioning internal stuff, right? Um, this is almost like racism. It's become more of a problem if you make it a problem, right? If you do external styles, you are proud of doing it, don't have to care what other people have to say, okay? And do to the best of your ability, and that's it. That's all it matters. All right, enough of that. But this video isn't about whether external style is good or internal style is good, okay? I'm not going to discuss about that. This video is about what is internal style, what constitute as a definition, right? What styles is internal or are internal and what are external. Now there are many different 
popular theories out there, but frankly, only one that is correct. Okay, this is not a, a topic of discussion or debate or opinion. This is some, you know, cold hard fact. So the people who believe that internal style have internal training, you know, in other words, in Chinese, you're talking about qi, energy, and all of that. So there are people who believe that internal style has internal training, or qigong, whatever, external style doesn't. This theory is completely false, okay? If having internal training, having breathing training, having qi training is a requirement for internal style, then there are no external styles in Chinese martial arts, okay? Almost every single Chinese martial arts style has some degree of internal training, okay? Now that is not the definition, even if you look at a very hard style like Honga, its third form, Iron Thread or Iron Wire, depending on how you translate it, is a heavily breathing and internal energy focused training, right? The entire, the entire Iron Thread form isn't about combat or you know, application, it's about controlling the energy, breathing, you know, where to inhale, what sound to make, channeling the energy to different part of the body. It's very internally focused, okay? But that does not make Honga an internal style. Right, same goes for you know southern mantis, a, a lot of breathing control, a lot of internal stuff, as well as some of the northern styles. Okay, so first point, internal style and external style are not differentiated by whether or not they have internal training. All Chinese martial art, to some extent, has internal training. All right, next, the people who believe that internal style are from Taoism, external styles are from Shaolin. This theory is also false. Okay, and this only came about during the Republic era when they were forming the Nanjing Guoshu Academy, right? It was a national martial arts institute for China at the time. Now, one of the co-founders of this institute, which happened to be a general called Li Jinglin, okay, he has a weird fascination for Wudang martial art. Okay, he supposedly was in the forest one day, met a stranger who taught him a sword form and told him that this is a long lost Wudang sword form. Now the sword form itself is quite good, right? I'm not saying that the form is bad or, or the technique is bad, but he actually has had no evidence or certainty that this is a Wudang style, Wudang sword. However, due to this incident, he has a very strong fascination towards Wudang, which is why when he formed the Nanjing Koshu Academy, he insisted on separating the class structure into Shaolin and Wudang. Okay, because you know he's just so fascinated with this concept. And with Wudang, he put Sun Lutang as the head of the of the, the, the department. And he put the three internal styles under Sun Lutang, part of Wudang. And all the other styles he put under Shaolin. And this is how this whole idea of you know internal style comes from Wudang. External camera Shaolin derives, and you can see it's very recent, it's a Republic era, it's not old at all. And it has no further historical significance, right? It was made up, so, so to speak. And this classification system actually failed. I think around three months within you know, the initial opening of the academy, there was so much infighting politics and people unhappy with the classification, they eventually abolished the system and they made a new system with like long first, short hand short weapon, long weapon, etc, etc. They made another system after that. And Sun Lutang actually re resigned as being the head of Wudang. He, he went somewhere else. He went to Shanghai, I think. And anyway, so that shows you that not everybody agreed with that. But because it was a thing at the time, a lot of people who, who, you know, who actually liked the idea, they just carried on after you know, the academy was closed down. When age moved on, people still passed on this idea. But like I said, this is also not correct. Another popular theory, at least in China, right, it might be less well known in the West, is that um, internal was first coined by a tombstone. Okay, there was a tombstone around Ming Dynasty, I believe, Yuan, between Yuan to Ming Dynasty, I can't remember the exact date. With a tombstone. On the tombstone, it described an event of a person who lived at that time, who was supposedly a martial art master and a representative of internal style, Nei Jia, okay? So a lot of people believe this is the first evidence that, you know, this concept of Nei Jia was coined. While others, you know, scholars have pointed out that this whole tombstone has more, you know, political undertone than martial art, okay? So, so that, that explanation in the nutshell says that 
the whole internal or nei nei jia, right? Also in Chinese can also mean in the house or internal, okay? Yeah. And the wai jia, external, are referring to the Han Chinese versus the nomad Mongolian and the Manchurian, you know, the, the invaders. So the whole tombstone, although it was written like they were praising martial art, was actually a hidden political message to tell the Han people to raise up and to you know get rid of the invaders. Now I'm not a historian, so I can't really comment whether that theory is true or not. But the point is, you know, that tombstone isn't a good enough evidence to suggest that internal style was already coined back in that days. And even if and even if it was, now this is the big if now, even if it if it was, there is no zero link between that tombstone to what we constitute as internal style today. So whatever we do today has actually zero link to, to that tombstone. So even if they did coin the name back then, it is definitely not what we know as internal to today. So these are the few incorrect but yet popular theories about what defines internal and external. Oh yes, there was a, another one, which is similar to, to the Wudang Shaolin one. They just said that internal means nei jia, which means you stay in your house. Uh, AKA you are, you know, a lay person. Wai jia means you go out of your family and you become a monk. So that's like another subdivision from the Shaolin Wudang theory, right? Of whether you are a monk, which in Chinese means that, uh, or in Buddhism, means that you renounce your family and you go out of your, your family. You no longer have a family, hence wai jia. Nei jia means you saw in your family. Again, that's a completely nonsense theory and it was thought out by some boring scholar in China who had nothing better to do but to play with words. All right, so none of these are correct. Now, the hard fact is that the three styles that we consider as the three pillars of internal style, Tai Chi, Xing Yi, and Ba Gua, was only formed in early to mid Qing dynasty. Right? So these styles are not old. When they wrote that tombstone, there was no there was no Tai Chi, there was no Ba Guan, there was no Xing Yi. And furthermore, these three styles only were band together by Sun Lu Tang. Okay, so all of you who you probably all know him, he's quite famous, but if you don't, he was one of the most famous and influential Chinese martial arts masters during the Republic era. He both had very high skill ability as well as very strong political ties. So, you know, everywhere, you know, he had good connection everywhere he go, and he rise to immense fame among the Chinese martial masters at the time. And he had a lot of pull, a lot of say, and then, you know, a lot of influence. So he was actually the person who actually put together what we know as internal styles today. And the reason behind that, okay, obviously I don't know for sure, but most likely it's because he did all three, okay? Sun so Tang started off as a Xing Yi practitioner, he was then introduced to Cheng Tinghua by you know, his grandmaster Guo Yunshen. And after doing Ba Gua, he realized that the two styles share similarities. And later, obviously he wasn't the first person to, to have felt that, okay? Um, ba Gua and Xing Yi has been helping each other out ever since Guo Yunshen went to Beijing and met with Dong Haishuan. So ever since then, Ba Gua and Xing Yi, the two styles have already been working with each other. There were a lot of people before Sun Tang who trained in both styles, such as um, Zhang Zhaodong right, or, or Zhang Zhang Kui. He was one of the most famous ones who, who trained in both, and as well as Li, Li Chun Yi, he also trained in Ba Gua, although he was better known for his Xing Yi. So Sun Tang was not the first, but he was one of them who trained in both systems and saw similarity, just like you know his masters before him. And later on, he also learned Tai Chi from um, Hao Weizhen. And he further then realized that Tai Chi also shares similarities with Xing Yi and Ba Gua. And at which point he had this idea that you know, he should combine these three into one larger system. Another part of this history that was less known is that he also tried to combine Tong Bei. Now the reason for that, because you know, Tong Bei is seen as an external martial art to most people. But the reason he was trying to do that is because he had a brother by oath called Zhang Ce, my great grandmaster of Wu Xing Tong Bei, the founder of Wu Xing Tong Bei. Right? If you've been following my video previously, you will know that he then see uh, Zhang Ce, great 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 grandmaster Zhang Ce, spent ten years in the Yang family. So he's a very highly trained Tai Chi practitioner, and he merged Tai Chi principles with Tong Bei, which founded Wu Xing Tong Bei, which is pretty much an internal version of Tong Bei. He is a brother of 
brother by oath of Sun Lutang. Right? And that is probably why Sun Lutang wanted to include Tong Bei and made, made these four styles into an internal martial art union sort of thing. However, unfortunately, or shall I say, he had a fallout uh, with Zhang Ce at, at some point in his life. Exactly what of the fallout is debatable, okay? But there was a fallout and then Zhang Ce refused to join his uh, alliance, so to speak, which is why in the end, Wu Xing Tongbei was not included in his, uh, you know, Nei Jia Quan category, while the other three sort of just joined in. So that is pretty much how the internal system came about. And naturally anything that he Sun Lutang didn't include, which you know, which isn't Taiji, Xing Yi and Ba Gua, became external, right? Due to his inclusion and exclusion. And thanks to Li Jinglin, that general who founded the Nanjing co-founded the Nanjing Koshu Academy, which you know Sun Lutang has a lot of influence over, it became, you know, Nei Jia Wu Dang's section had Taiji, Xing Yi, and Ba Gua, as well as like Long Fuzz and all the other styles. And that's how this whole s s st structure stuck. Okay, but it has nothing to do with actual Wudang, it has nothing to do with actual Shaolin. It was just Sun Lutang and Li Jinglin who, you know, eventually gave birth to this system of classification. And later on, he was allowed to say, but wait a minute, right? Now, if Xing Yi is internal, what about his mother, aka, you know, Shanxi Dai family Xin Yi? And if Tai Ji, Yang Star Tai Ji in particular, and, and Wu Star, right? But back then there was no Yang and Wu, they were just called Tai Yu Tai Ji. So now if Tai Ji were internal, what about his you know, forefather or mother, uh, which is Chen Star, right? And at the time Chen Star actually isn't called Tai Ji, Chen Star is called Canon first, or just Chen family first. Tai Ji was a name that only adopted later when Chen, uh, Chen Fa Ke came to Beijing. In fact, when he first came to Beijing, he actually still called his, uh, you know, his martial art Chen family first or Canon first. It's only later on that he also, you know, started calling his martial art Chen style Tai Chi. So before that, you know, when Sun Tang included Tai Chi, it was aimed at Yang style and Wu style, which at the time was not separated, right? It was just Tai Tai Chi. And of course, later on he had his own version of the Sun style, but at the time it was just one Tai Chi. So people were asking now, you know, if Tai Chi is included, what about Chen style? Because Tai Chi came onto Chen style. So eventually, this definition sort of broadened a little bit. It includes the original three, and it also includes the origins of these, you know, of the original three. Of course, obviously, Bagua didn't have origins, so that one, you know, we, have, we can ignore. But basically, it included Xing Yi because of Xing Yi, and it included Chen Star because of Tai Chi. And it also then, you know, obviously, but when you know when Yi Chang was invented by Wang Xiangzhai. Sun Tang was pretty much, you know, close to passing away. So he didn't really have a say in this, but later on people also kind of included Yi Quan into internal style because Wang Yanzhai studied Xing Yi, he, you know, he got influence from Ba Gua and Tai Chi and made Yi Quan. So Yi Quan is sort of like a, like a hybrid of these three internal styles. So naturally people also agreed to include that into the internal structure. But pretty much everything else are considered as external, okay? No because they don't have internal training, not because of anything else, simply because that's just how this whole classification came about. Now, however, this system is not without merit, okay? It's not that Sun Lutang just suddenly one day smoke weed and decide, you know what, I'm gonna do this and make these stars get Oh yes, and of course, uh, Tong Bei, Wu Xing Tong Bei, although Zhang Grandma's, Great Grandma Zhang Ce disagreed to join, you can still classify it as internal today because now it's no longer about politics or, you know, uh, you know, none of these things is simply just a way to classify Chinese martial art. And Wu Xing Tongbei does share the same, same, similar, or same or similar trait to the rest of the internal categories. So up to now, you should have a fairly good idea of what is constituted as internal style, what is not, who introduced this idea, and why did he do so. Okay, the reason behind this kind of inclusion and exclusion. So if you ever wondered what's, what is internal and what is not, then up to now the video should answer your question fairly well. However, if you want to wish to know a bit more on the reason behind this classification, right? Because 
even though this classification sort of was formed by one person, Sun Lutang, but it, it was agreed upon by many other part of the internal system. So this isn't just his you know, single person bias opinion toward Chinese martial art, okay? It's not that he trained in these three styles, he liked them more than the others, and that's why these three were grouped together. That is not the case. In fact, he was a practitioner of Shaolin before he started uh, Xing Yi. And he didn't include that. Right? Okay, I mean, not because Shaolin isn't good or anything, but because it does not fit the same ideology or same method of training and understanding as the others that he'd been trained in. So the point is, he didn't invent this classification or division just because of his own personal bias opinion. Okay, there is a very good reason behind this. So in the next video, we're going to explore what makes internal styles, right? Xing Yi, Tai Chi, Ba Gua, and you know, and the derivatives from these primary three. We're going to look at how they, even though the movement are different and they're different styles, but they actually share very similar qualities and understanding in terms of body mechanic and training. We're going to look at that and compare that to how it differs to the external styles that are found in China. Now, bear in mind the external styles are not a singular category. The external styles are only categorized by excluding them from internal style. Right? So what that means is internal style all share the same principles. External styles do not all share the same principles by themselves. Okay? They just been called external because they were not included in the internal category. In other words, it was external style we're gonna be looking at the north external styles or the long first category which will share similarities. We'll look at the southern external styles, the five family from Canton, the Hakka styles, they're actually, although all southern, they are also quite different, right? So they're different sort of categories among external styles themselves. They're not just in one big group like internal styles are. And you know, because there are actually a lot more external styles and lineages than internal. Internal only has the primary three and its derivative, right? Its parents and its you know its um, children, so to speak, the style that came out of the three primaries. Whereas external style, if you look at it, there are much more different diversity of lineage, branches, styles, etc. etc. So therefore it's unfair to classify them all as one category. So that category only exists because of the exclusion from internal. Alright, and again. This isn't out of spite, out of elitist, out of any other negative reason. It's simply because internal stars share the same principle, through town trend in three of them, saw the similarities and decided to combine them for easier reference. Okay? So anyway, this will be it for the part one of the definition of internal and external. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you know. If you want, you can support my Patreon account, which would be greatly appreciated. I hope this video has been informative, and I'll see you in the part 2 of the definition of the internal and external. Hope you enjoyed this, thanks for watching, Tryson's martial channel, and I'll see you next time.